Hi. If one of your hot plates are taking longer than usual to heat up, it could be the hot plate itself that's at fault, or it could be the regulator switch. So in this video I'll be showing you how to access and change a regulator on a Whirlpool AKM335 hob. The tools I'll be using on this project are a flat bladed screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a 10mm spanner and a 10mm socket attachment, although you could use just a spanner, a thin flat bladed screwdriver, a pair of snipe nose pliers, two wallpaper scrapers or similar and a multimeter. Before working on any electrical appliance, especially cookers or hobs such as this one, first switch the power off or if you're not sure then remove the mains fuse. Hobs can be attached to work surfaces by a number of different methods and this one uses four spring clips which incorporate two little barbs on each clip. When the hob is fitted the barb section of the clips are forced out against the inside edge of the worktop and hold it in place. However the most common method are four brackets which are screwed to the underside of the hob and bridge the gap between it and the worktop. To remove this hob from the worktop you'll need a couple of flat surface tools. I'm using wallpaper scrapers but anything with a smooth flat surface will do such as a spatula for instance. When the scrapers have been eased up between the hob and the worktop that side of the hob can then be pushed up and the whole unit lifted free from the recess. This one has come free very easily but in a lot of cases the hub will take some freeing from the foam seal between it and the worktop in which case you may have to leave the two apart from the top or in other cases a sealant may have been used to hold the hob in place which will also incur levering the two apart but as long as there are no brackets or clips underneath the hob there is nothing else fixing it to the worktop. To work on these units the base cover needs to be removed but the first thing to come off is the mains cable. There are four 10mm nuts holding the base cover onto the hob and when they've been removed you can lever the cover free from the hob unit. But before you do that, unhook the junction box and remove the one screw holding it onto the cover. This will make handling the hob easier later on. Now you can lift the cover from the framework of the hob by easing one corner up. For this it's best to start at the opposite side to where the junction box is located because that edge has two locating lugs which the base cover hook into. Now you have access to the workings of the hob. Take photos of the regulators and their wiring connections for when it comes to reconnecting the new switch. Although both regulators are wired the same, except for the link wires, it's still good policy to take photos of any multi-connection devices you may be working on. These regulators come in pairs because they're linked together via two brass connections so you need to remove two control knobs to access the retaining clasps on both the switches. Place something under the hob to raise it a bit so when the tags on the switches have been depressed they can be pushed through. There are no internal connections on these regulator switches so unless there is a visible fault such as a burnt out connection or a broken or defective part of the switch then the regulator should be ok. There's nothing wrong with this regulator, I'm just removing and refitting the same one to show the job is not as complex as it first looks. Don't remove the terminals by pulling on the wires as this could snap them, instead try levering them off with the aid of a thin bladed screwdriver. When it comes to replacing the regulator, just remember to take your time and if you're not sure of a connection, refer to the photos you took or check the other switch. But be aware one pair of regulators have a link wire, whilst the same terminals on the other pair are connected to a neon. Once you've reconnected all the wires, clip it back into the holes in the hob and refit the knobs. Don't forget to replace the rubber sleeves first because these help protect the controls. Before you replace the base cover, first refit the junction box and be sure to reconnect the earth terminal to it. Another thing to watch out for is that the wires on and around the junction box are at the side of it rather than under it because this would prevent the cover from sitting properly. There are two lugs on the inside edge of the hob that hold the cover down and it must be slotted under these lugs for it to fit properly. The edges of the cover may need to be pressed together with those of the hob before the four nuts are fitted. The 
At this point it would be wise to do an earth continuity test before connecting the mains power cable. Turn all your control knobs to their maximum settings and set your meter on the dial to 200 ohm scale. Then touch one probe on the casing of the hob, now touch the other probe on the neutral terminal in the junction box and then each of the two live terminals. There should be no reading on your meter but if there is then you have a faulty circuit or a trapped wire. You may get away with using the old sealing strip from under the hot plate but remember that one of the reasons it's there is to prevent liquid from getting under it. So if you're not sure about its condition then replace it. Not every sealing strip will come off as easy as this one but before you fit a new one make sure you clean the facing edge on the worktop so it will stick. Now connect the mains to the hob and slot it in place. If you have the type with brackets underneath, you'll need to fit and tighten them before switching the power back on. On behalf of Selfix UK, we'd like to thank you for watching this video and hope you found it useful. Goodbye.